Papyrus didn't know what to make of that. I'll try? Uncertainty crept up his spine in a weak shiver of stirring magic. He pushed it down. Now was absolutely not the time. Try really hard, okay? Sans guided Papyrus to a spot just behind him and slightly to his right. Stand here. That seems like the safest place. He looked back over his shoulder. I won't be able to see you, so, uh, please keep it together, bro. Papyrus nodded. I will. His palms itched. He could feel his magic shifting with his mounting anxiety, but it was weak enough still that he could manage it. He just wished he knew what to brace himself for. Sans gave him a thumbs up, and a grin that wavered a little around the edges. Cool. Remember, you're totally safe. I got this. That was a statement that really needed more clarification, but Papyrus didn't have time to ask what, exactly, it was that Sans had. Magic flared in Sans' left hand, a neat sphere of not-quite-flame caged by his fingers. Papyrus looked at it with a small pang of envy and sadness. Until very recently, his own control had been at least that good. He flinched as he felt Sans' magic bell outward, scraping against him and rising to coalesce at a point above Sans' head. It was the work of a second, and then... Papyrus took a step back, shaking with the effort of holding down his magic. What is that? Don't freak out. The stern edge to Sans' voice was enough to catch Papyrus off guard, jolting him out of his panic before it could get started. It's not gonna do anything. The... thing... the attack... floated sedately overhead, twitching its bifurcated jaw now and then, but otherwise still. It really did look like an animal skull, though not from any animal Papyrus had ever seen. It was big, its mouth lined with steak knife sized teeth, its eye sockets stared out at nothing, and something about it was... off. Too real. More solid than an attack had a right to be. Was this what his magic had made that night? No wonder it had pulled so hard on his soul. What is it? Papyrus asked again, edging closer, gaze locked onto the skull. Nothing about it looked the least bit safe, but it was arresting, hard to look away from. What was it? His tremors were subsiding. Frightened as he was, he trusted his brother not to hurt him. That thing was damned creepy just the same. It's sort of a cannon. Sen said. It kinda... projectile vomits raw magic, I guess. With a lot of enthusiasm. He shrugged one shoulder. Kinda draining. A cannon, Papyrus repeated. That didn't sound like anything they should be able to do. Sans flexed his left hand, popping his knuckles. The skull tipped side to side like a puzzled dog. It doesn't look like we're the only monsters that have it either. I found some notes a while ago. Can't tell if they were describing it or designing it. They're hard to read. Anyway, he said. It's called the Gastoblaster, if you can believe that. <laughs> Pretty goofy. Papyrus scowled. Really? He couldn't place why, but the words snagged over something in his mind the wrong way. The feeling was gone just as quickly, and he was left wondering at the ridiculousness of the name itself. That it was named after someone was obvious, but a magic attack wasn't something you could name after yourself like... like a quiche. They weren't things that were made. Not like that. 
They were a natural expression of magic, an extension of body and will. Not... Not... Wait. Notes? Where did... What was Sans talking about? We don't have to call her that if you don't want. Sans stroked his chin, thinking. How about Cooper? It looks kinda like a Cooper to me. It occurred to Papyrus that they were both very drunk, and that this was not an ideal time to be messing around with high power magic, especially magic neither of them seemed to really understand. Questions piled up and log jammed in his head. How long have you been able to do this? A while, San shrugged. Don't really remember. How do you forget a thing like that? Papyrus gestured at the skull, which didn't take any offense or react in any way. Just a mindless attack. Right. Sans forced a laugh. Huh. Hey, I'm a busy man. I can't be expected to keep track of every little detail. His grin wilted under Papyrus' glare. Huh. Look, I really can't remember. I was probably stressed out or distracted or something. Either way, I'm pretty good at it now, right? How? How? No one was laid back enough to take summoning something like that in its stride. Not even Sans. Though, in fairness, laid back wasn't what Sans was. Not really. And you didn't tell me about it, Papyrus said, crossing his arms to hide the fact that his hands were still shaking. Well, no one likes a show-off. Um... San scuffed one heel into the frozen ground. I'm not... super comfortable with old Coops, to be honest, he said. I'm not sure whether I'm relieved that you've got one too or what. On the one hand, we have all the same attacks again, and it was actually bugging me that we didn't for a while there, but... He seemed to notice that he was rambling and stopped. Papyrus found himself extremely concerned about whatever Sans had been about to say. This was raising a lot more questions than it was answering, and he just couldn't get his jumbled thoughts in order to even begin to make sense of it. It didn't help that a good proportion of those thoughts were the mental equivalent of hysterical screaming. Notes, he said. That one detail above all others kept floating to the top of the confused tangle in his head. Where would Sans find such a thing? Who could have written them, and why? He did his best to convey all these questions in that single word, because damned if he could manage complete sentences at the moment. Oh, yeah. Sans shifted. I wouldn't worry about that right now. They're pretty dry, not very helpful. Above them, the skull clicked its teeth shut. One thing at a time. Papyrus frowned. I mean, San said, the important thing is, um... He trailed off, scowling as though annoyed that his point hadn't shown up at the end of his sentence as he'd expected. Well, we can both do this, right? So it must be normal. For us. So neither of us have to feel like... Like freaks over this, or anything. He nodded, satisfied. That's the takeaway here. That was debatable. Papyrus was not at his most articulate at the moment, though, and he knew well enough that Sans would just lead the conversation around in circles until Papyrus gave up. He couldn't win the battle over the sock in the living room. He had no chance here. A light snow started to fall, 
sleety little pellets as the highest reaches of the fog refroze and condensed. Papyrus watched it bounce off the skull, and collect in between the ridged horns and in the groove scoring its snout. So... Sans watched Papyrus watch the skull. What should we call yours, do you think? Andy... Felix... Nah. He shook his head. Georgia? That's classy. Or Lucida, he said, snapping his fingers. You could call it Lucy, for short. I'm not calling it Lucy, Papyrus said, the absurdity of the very idea of finding no room in a head already overflowing with impossibilities. It slid off and away like snow off a pitched roof. Sans sniffed. <laughs> well, I think it's nice. The skull's jaws clicked as though in agreement. Coop and Lucy, just a couple of death rays out on the town. He chuckled. <laughs> It'd be easier to come up with a good name if I could see it, I guess. No. Look, it's not gonna... Papyrus crossed his arms. I said no. Seeing that massive skull, knowing what it did... The remembered feeling of panicked rage forming his magic into something that was so... so... No. He'd be happy to never form that attack again. That one second had been a second too long, as far as he was concerned. And Sans had been left staring right down the barrel of it. Never again. Fine. San said, sighing. I get it. It's kind of unsettling. He glanced up at the skull. I'm not real fond of it myself, but it's not going to go away. Resignation crept back into his voice. It's okay. Papyrus hadn't intended to make Sans feel bad. He wasn't sure how he'd done that and so he didn't know how to apologize. I don't even know how I did it before, he added. He couldn't summon the attack even if he wanted to. He profoundly did not want to. What were you feeling? Sans asked. When it happened, do you remember? Rage. Sansa's shove hadn't hurt, but it had made Papyrus see red, a whip-crack of emotion that had bypassed all rational thought. Panic and loss of control and rage, rage, rage. It... I'm not sure. Papyrus dropped his gaze, staring down at his feet. Bone white on snow white. He would have liked to just fade into the snow and disappear from view. I felt... He said, shame rising up to choke him. I felt... Cornered and upset. San said nothing, waiting patiently. Why was he lying when he didn't need to? That wasn't right. Not when Sans was doing his best to be honest with him. To help him. And... Maybe angry, Papyrus added, wrapping his arms around himself. Definitely angry. Just for an instant. But an instant was all it had needed. Yeah... Papyrus looked up. Sans wasn't looking at him, but rather up at the skull, still hovering overhead like a balloon. As though feeling Papyrus' attention on him, he made eye contact, smiling just a little and without a trace of humour. Yeah. That sounds about right. It would be pretty great, all things considered, if the ground would open up and swallow him. No such luck. It's okay, San said. 
I was pissed off too. As if pissed off was in the same universe as the rage that had made Papyrus consider, even subconsciously, even for a moment, hurting his brother. Sorry I pushed you. Papyrus didn't want to talk about this. I'm sorry I hit you, he said. It was the most minor of the litany of apologies he owed Sans. He was sorry for being so cruel that night, and for putting Sans's life in danger, and for scaring him, and for a dozen other failures. And... and I'm sorry I... He lost his nerve. He couldn't face it. Couldn't put it into words. It will never happen again. Sands made a sound that wasn't a laugh. <laughs> yeah, it will. No, it won't, Papyrus said, voice cracking. I promise. His own brother didn't trust him. Well, and why should he? Papyrus hadn't given him much reason to do so. He didn't even believe himself just now, though he desperately wanted to. I don't think it'll be up to you, bro. Sans looked to his left hand, a light with magic that was contained and controlled. I mean, if it were really possible to just push it down and never let it out again, wouldn't I have done it? Above them, the skull yawned, mouth gaping open, lower jaw spreading wide. The hint of a blue glow, like a pilot light, was just visible at the point where jaws joined cranium. I'm not good at this because I want to be. It wasn't a bright light, but Papyrus couldn't look away from it. The skull was pointed safely away, facing the trees that lined the river. That soft light signaled a danger far more potent than the maw of teeth that surrounded it. Those jaws weren't meant to bite. They were merely the barrel of the cannon. The mouth shut, teeth interlocking like a jagged zipper. On its own or by Sansa's command, Papyrus couldn't tell. The next time you feel like that, Sans said, it's going to come out, whether you summon it or not. Papyrus caught himself on the edge of a protest, but he knew it was true. It had happened once. It was only a matter of time before it happened again. Maybe in even worse circumstances. Just one more way he was putting his brother and everyone else at risk. All because he'd become too weak to control his magic, and too cowardly to try. Flowey was right. He had to come to terms with his magic as it was now, to regain control. But he couldn't do anything anywhere near Sans. It wasn't worth it. Here, Sans said, taking one wobbling step back to put some space between them. You can get a better look at Coop, then maybe it won't bother you so much. He whistled up at the skull. Hey, Coop! Come on down here, you big lug. Papyrus was sure there was no point in talking to it. He was also sure he didn't want a closer look at it, thank you very much. But it was already moving, sinking smoothly down to rest in the snow. From this close-up, the uncanny realness of it was even more apparent. It looked for all the world like normal bone. Even though it had only existed for a few minutes, it was covered in score marks and scratches like old scars. Instead of the soft luminescence of a conjured attack, it was dull and weathered. Real. Sitting there on the ground, the skull somehow looked even larger than it had looming overhead. At its tallest point, it reached nearly Papyrus's hip, and the tips of the horns were a little higher still. Sans leaned against it, working very hard to look completely chilled out. 
See, he said, it's even easier to handle than normal attacks once you're used to it. He rested his chin in his hand. Practice makes perfect, huh? Sans was only acting this way to help Papyrus stay calm, but it was working, much to Papyrus's mingled irritation and gratitude. He took a step closer. There you go, Sans said, encouraging him to come closer still. Check it out. Everything's fine. From this angle, the glow at the back of its mouth shone out through its eye sockets, giving Papyrus the sensation that it was watching him. At Sans's nod, he reached out and tentatively brushed his fingertips over the skull, tracing one of the ridges above its eye socket. When nothing terrible happened, he laid his palm against it. It felt just like real bone, almost like it had a physical matter of its own. Is it tiring? Keeping it going like this, I mean, Papyrus said, studying Sans out of the corner of his eye socket. He'd been maintaining this thing for several minutes now, and it wasn't exactly trivial magic. Sans grinned. Nah, once it's formed, it's not too bad. Firing it is where it gets rough, he yawned. <sighs> took a while to get the hang of it without having to take a long nap afterward. It's kinda overkill. He blinked like it was taking real effort to stay alert. Hmm. I was going somewhere with that, he said scowling. But I kinda lost my train of... Papyrus watched him struggle not to doze off. Are you alright? Are you sure you don't need a break? The visual aid wasn't strictly necessary after all. They could discuss this without the addition of a literal death ray hanging around being spooky and hazardous. I'm fine, bro, San said, waving him off. Just kinda floaty all of a sudden. Not in a bad way, he added. Kinda sleepy is all. Must have had more cider than I thought. <laughs> now he did seem relaxed, propped up on the skull like he wasn't reluctant at all to touch it. He glanced down. Oh, bro, he said. Are you uh, aware that you're doing that? Papyrus followed Sans's gesture, looking down at his own hands. At some point, he'd started sort of absently petting the skull, the light scrape of bone on bone too soft to hear over their conversation. Oh, sorry. He stopped, pulling his hands away. That was awkward. Petting an attack. He'd start calling it by that stupid name next. <sighs> If they'd had skin, both brothers would have jumped out of it. Papyrus stumbled back, tripping and landing rather gracelessly on his backside in the snow. Sand stared down at the skull, shock and total discombobulation written across his face. In capital letters. Excuse the fuck out of me? They watched the skull, which was still laying motionless on the ground. Papyrus felt his magic wreathing in his hands, blue light sparkling over the snow. It had done nothing beyond that, and he took a moment to be thankful as he pushed the welling anxiety back down. The light faded. What? What was that? The less than manly and cool tone of his voice wasn't as embarrassing as it normally would have been when Sans looked every inch as freaked out as he was. Sans frowned and shook his head. I don't know, he said. It's never done that before. They both flinched back as the voiceless whine came again, the skull's jaws twitching. <sighs> that was not okay. Nothing about any of that was okay. Sans, why is it doing that? 
Sen shrugged, clearly at a loss and not happy about that fact. Beats me. It's not real chatty most of the time. He scratched his head. Hey, um, come back over here for a second. That was asking a lot, but Papyrus clambered to his feet, a task that would have been far easier if he weren't still hours away from sobriety. He hadn't been comfortable standing so close to the skull before it had started making that frankly demonic noise, but Sen seemed to have an idea, so Papyrus forced himself to return to his place opposite his brother. This is gonna sound stupid, but could you maybe pet it again or something? He rolled his eyes at Papyrus's incredulous look. Yeah, yeah, I know. Just humor me, alright? Papyrus sighed. Fine, he said. He stroked the flattened top of the skull's cranium. Nothing happened. After a few seconds, San said, Okay, now stop. Papyrus did so. <sighs> now that he was ready for it, Papyrus merely cringed at the low sound. Thoughtlessly, he started petting it again, and the skull quieted down. Huh. Sens drummed his fingers on the skull. Okay. That's a little weird. It was more than a little weird. But at least it made the enormous skull a bit less scary somehow. Am I going to have to pet this fool thing all night? The flicker of maybe pride Papyrus felt at the thought that Sans' attack seemed to like him was immediately drowned out by the fact that attacks couldn't like or feel any kind of way about anything because they were attacks. Hmm? I mean, Sen said, the lights of his eyes unfocusing slightly. You can if you want, I guess. Sans, I really don't think you're giving this the proper amount of concern, Papyrus snapped. There he was, nodding off again. Shaking his head like he was trying to dislodge some of the drowsiness, Sans chuckled. Oh, <laughs> don't worry, he said. I'm flipping shit on the inside. That's just really, really relaxing. This time, when Papyrus took his hand away, they were both expecting the skull's whining. Wonder what that's about, San said, coming out of his fog. That's kind of... Worrying, Papyrus supplied. San shrugged. I was gonna say trippy, but that works too. He dug a small notepad and a stubby pencil out of his jacket pocket, scribbling furiously. Papyrus crossed his arms. That really shouldn't be happening. Well, San said, still writing. The blaster stays tethered to me the whole time I'm using it, so... He trailed off, lost in thought for a moment. I don't know. Maybe there's some kind of feedback going on. Hmm. That sounded like something that called for a stronger reaction than curiosity. Papyrus glared down at the skull. He didn't like the idea of an attack that could talk back, much less influence the monster it belonged to. If Sans was bothered, he didn't show it. It's always been just me and, uh, targets whenever I've got this thing going, he said. Has never interacted with anyone else. Maybe... Maybe it just likes you. Or maybe it recognizes you or something. I mean, it's coming from me, right? A queasy lump formed under Papyrus' ribcage at that. Mine didn't recognize you, he said. Sans put his notepad away. Hey... He said, Don't do that. You were having a panic attack, bro. You can't think into it so much. 
Besides, I could be totally off base. He laid a hand on the skull. Obviously, I don't have this all figured out yet. He smiled, tight and uncertain. But we could tackle it together, if you want. Papyrus was torn. He needed to get a handle on this, at least to the point that he didn't summon it by accident. But so much could go wrong. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do, Papyrus. San said quietly. The sharp crack of a tree limb breaking filled the air. The skull lurched up off the ground, jaws gaping, aiming at the trees. The glow of raw magic gathered rapidly in its mouth. Sans had just enough time and presence of mind to force its muzzle upward as it fired. Light, blinding, and a shockwave that thumped into his chest were all Papyrus could process of the blast in the half-second it lasted. The skull collapsed into a scatter of spent magic, ripped apart by Sans's will. Just visible across the river, through the curtain of fresh steam, was a swath of bare ground where the snow had been melted away. Damaged trees listed against each other. They stood in the vacuum of light and sound the blaster had left behind, lit by the faint glow of the bones Papyrus didn't recall summoning to fence them off from the trees, and whatever imagined threat may have been in them. The bones stuck up from the ground at crazy angles, a testament to how little either of them needed to be using magic right now. Welp! Sans was shaking, eye sockets and grin too wide. We're drunk of our asses, and this was a stupid fucking idea. We should go before anyone shows up, huh? Papyrus nodded, shivering. No argument there. 